to Crazy Kids channel. In today's session, we will see how to find quartile deviation for raw data and for group root data. But the quartile deviation is defined as dispersion of data around the central point or measure of spread. And it is also called as the semi interquartile range. If we take data like this, data can be divided into four quarters for which we need three different points. Consider this is the length of the data. After arranging the data, the first part would be from lower limit to Q1 and the next one is Q1 to Q2, Q2 to Q3 and Q3 to the last limit of the data. To find these central values, we have already seen that median should be calculated. So the first quarter would be the midpoint from lower limit to the median and the second quarter Q3 would be a middle point from the median to the upper last point of the data. So if we see that uh, to determine the quartile deviation, we just have to find the first quarter and third quarter values. And the formula for the quartile deviation is given as third quartile minus first quartile divided by two. Here, these quartiles are represented as Q3 and Q1. After finding the quartile deviation, we can also find the coefficient of quartile deviation. And the coefficient of quartile deviation will allow you to compare the dispersion for two or more sets of data. If we take the formula, it is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. Q3 and Q1 values we have seen in the previous slide, the same values we will use to find the coefficient of quartile deviation as well. Now let us take an example and see how to do the quartile deviation. In this case, the data is a raw data which is not grouped and to find the quartile deviation for this, first we have to arrange it in an order. After arranging the order, it would look like this. Now, we need to find the first quartile. First quartile would be the n plus 1 by 4th position. We have to go check that position and get that value as first quartile value. Now, here we have nine different values and if we substitute n value in this formula, we will get 2.5. But 2.5 position means we have to take the average of second value and third value. From the range, the second value is 10 and the third value is 18. So we have to take average of these two, which would be 14. So the Q1 equal to 14. Once we are done with calculating Q1, next we have to find Q3. Q3 can be found using 3 into n plus 1 divided by 4. And whereas n equal to 9 in our case, after substituting the values, the value is 7.5. 7.5 position here means we have to take the average of 7th and 8th values. So from these things, the 7th and 8th values are 30 and 42, average of which would be 36. So now Q3 equal to 36, we just have to substitute them in the formula. Quartile deviation is Q3 minus Q1 by 2. On substitution, we will get 11 as the quartile deviation for this data. And to get the coefficient, we can use the formula of Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. Now, if we look at how to do the quartile deviation for group of data, we already know that group of data could be of two types. One is exclusive and the other is inclusive. In case if we get inclusive class intervals, then we have to convert it into exclusive class intervals, which can be done just by taking the average of upper limit of a class with the lower limit of next class and substituting these two values with the average. On converting those classes, it will look like this. See here, the upper limit and lower limit, we have replaced them with the average of the values. So the first step would be to check whether 
the class intervals or exclusive or inclusive in case of inclusive we would convert that to the exclusive class after this let us consider this particular values for finding the quartile deviation so here we have got actually the inclusive classes so the inclusive class range was converted to the exclusive class range and now we have to take the cumulative frequency cumulative frequency is nothing but the sum of frequency of that class with the previous classes for the first class we can just keep you directly starting from the second class we have to get the sum of the frequencies so for second class it would be 48 plus 189 and we will write the value here for the third class it would be the sum of these three values and for fourth class sum of the four, class, four values like that we will keep on writing the values and the last value in the cumulative frequency would represent the number of observations in the data now we have to find the value of q1 and q2 the formula of which would look something similar like the formula for median but here in place of n by 2 which is used to find the mid value we will keep n by 4 for q1 and 3 n by 4 for q3 so for q1 the formula would be like this it would be n by 4 here and l represents the lower limit of the value where which we have to consider depending upon the n by 4 value here n by 4 is nothing but 400 divided by 4 that is 100 from the cumulative frequency we have to consider the class which has got a value greater than or equal to 100 so here it would be the second class second class has a value which is greater than 100 so from this class we will get all the values of l m f of the formula so here l would be the lower limit of this class that is 500.5 and then n by 4 is 100 we have already seen that minus m m is the cumulative frequency of a class before the class that we are considering so this is the class we are considering so 48 would be m then f is the frequency of the class that we have considered so this is the class we have considered and f would be 189 into c c is the range of a particular class we have take a class and we have to find the class interval that is 650 minus uh, here 650.5 minus 500.5 this class intervals the calculated new class interval should be considered which would be 50 and that would be same for each and every class so into 150 after simplifying this we will get 541.77 x q1 once q1 is calculated now we have to calculate q3 for q3 we have seen here it would be 3n divided by 4 whereas n equal to 400 after simplifying this value it would be 300 so now from the cumulative frequency we have to identify a class which has a value greater than or equal to 300 now this particular class which has 325 in cumulative frequency would be considered so l would be lower limit of this class which is 650.5 now 3 into n divided by 4 it's written directly minus m m is the cumulative frequency of a class before the one we have identified so it would be this this is the one we are considering for q3 so m is from this previous class we have to consider that is 320 sorry 237 divided by f f for this particular class is 88 into c c is 150 so after calculating this it would be 757.89 once q1 and q3 are done we have to keep them in the formula quartile deviation is nothing but q3 minus q1 divided by 2 if we substitute the values we will get 108.06 as the quartile deviation for this data so like this we can get the quartile deviations and we can also calculate the coefficient of quartile deviation q3 minus q1 divided by q3 plus q1 we will calculate these values 
to compare two different data so for this if we substitute the values we will get in point values like this and we can also check the if we have another data we will check the coefficient of quarter elevation and we will get the conclusion where the deviation is more and all that's how we do quarter elevation and quarter efficient of quarter elevation. Thanks for watching.